Selena, do I have some <laughs> news for you? I do. <laughs> you don't seem to care. Never mind then. I'll just keep I the do news care. to myself. Tell me, tell me quickly. <laughs> you know what, Selena? I will tell you. Okay. On the other side. The baby's here. If you're watching, you can see her. Hi, Sunny. Hi, baby girl. She smiles at me every time I say hi to her. It's just the most heartwarmingest thing. She's our little sunshine. She's our little sunshine. Names are prophetic. We nailed that one. <laughs> I, yeah. I nailed, that one. nailed that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, I have some news. Oh, yes, your news. We have some news. Yeah. So, yeah, Sunny does not like suspense. She's not a big fan of suspense. <laughs> not a fan. So, the last book that we released was See Through Marriage. Do you remember the year that we released that book? I'm sure I was pregnant or we had a baby. So 16? <laughs> 20? Oh my goodness. <laughs> 19. 2020? 2020. Okay. Okay. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> <laughs> and that we actually did the book launch because uh, that was when COVID was shutting everything down. We launched it at people. Like we we, we drove around and did a drive-by <laughs> book launch party. It was ridiculous. See Through Marriage. Well, actually, so for the first time in... Since, since that release, we have two other books we're releasing, and that's what I'm announcing here. Um, and actually, we're going to talk about communication today because these books are on the topic of communication. And so the, the husband's book is called How a Husband Speaks, and then there's a wife's book called How a Wife Speaks. They 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 kind of complement each other, but really it's just meant to help husbands yeah. and wives grow in parallel, not yes. necessarily in series if you're an electrician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you grow in parallel. So we're not, it's not like our 31 day pursuit challenge where the, the, the challenges intersect with each other, but this is actually where you're growing in parallel. And the whole premise of these books is that if you can get this one skill, right. If as a couple, you can learn to communicate just a little bit better, you will see an immediate improvement in your marriage. Every other aspect of dysfunction usually stems from some dysfunction in communication, or at least it's not remedied because there's dysfunctional communication. So uh, we're announcing those books today. You can actually pre-order those. Um, if you go to fiercemarriage.com slash speak, that's fiercemarriage.com slash speak. If you pre-order, they'll release in, I think, the second Tuesday in June. And so don't delay because uh, you'll get the best deal right now. But also it helps us to bootstrap the printing. We have our own publishing company. And so we're actually publishing. It's taken us a lot of time to edit and do all that sort of, sort of stuff, typesetting. But we're publishing this. So we need your help, our lovely uh, listeners. Uh, go to fiercemarriage.com slash speak. I want to read a quick quote from it because it'll actually quick quote. a quick quote. It'll actually prime the pump here as we head into this conversation. All right. This is from the intro to the How a Husband Speaks book book. I can't speak, apparently. <laughs> Here's what it says. It's hard to talk. It's hard to talk. It says, by communication, marriages either flourish or die. If a couple can't communicate, by which I mean they can't share ideas, meaning, and, the ex and experiences, not necessarily only through speech, then they can't meaningfully work through anything. Not sin, not frustration, not life's big questions, not even dinner plans. Without effective communication, marriages die on the vine, but with it, they have a chance. This isn't to understate the necessity of gospel centrality and Christ-like love, both required, but only to say that communication quality is high on the list of determiners for marital success. This is a biblical notion borne out by data. Mm -hmm. And we actually, there, there is some data that, that supports that that's cited in the book. Um, but yeah, that's, that's in the intro to the book. The big premise is that marriage communication matters. God cares how we speak to each other and it's a skill that can be learned and even mastered. So even in the book, there's, uh, there's the, the chapters, there's discussion and application questions. And then there's uh, communication, mediocrity and mastery mm -hmm. and the, the grids at the end of each chapter, 18 chapters in each right. book. So I, I talked that whole time. Do you have anything you want to add? <laughs> No, I like the the grids. Those are probably my favorite parts of the books. I mean, yes, the writing is hopefully <laughs> helpful anyways. Um, but the the mediocrity versus mastery, you know, what is what are things that I'm doing now that are, are really just contributing to the, the mediocre and less than communication yeah. versus yeah. what can I do uh, to master it? Not just to be good at communicating, but to connect with my husband, yeah. uh, to be unified uh, around the things of God and just live out his plans for our lives. 
Yeah. So check that, check that out. Go to fiercemarriage.com slash speak. We would love to have your support there. We'll continue talking about it in the coming weeks. Um, so for today's discussion, we're going to tackle communication generally, but the problem with talking about communication is, is that so much of it, of what we can say is so obvious. It's like you hear us talk and you're like, duh, duh, we have to talk. We have to listen. Duh. We have to understand each other. Duh. Like the problem here is not that we need more head knowledge, right. but we need heart change and we need habit change. So better communication is rarely solved by just more head knowledge, which we address this mostly in the book. It's mm-hmm. not just about teaching you tools. That's part of it. But you need to have a changed heart. You need to understand how does God want us to communicate to each other? Well, and who's the changer of the hearts, right? Yeah. And exactly. We How do we look to the source of the very catalyst of our sanctification, Christ himself, the Holy Spirit working in us. But then how can I set up habits in my life that will facilitate healthy communication toward my wife or mm-hmm. if you're a wife toward her husband? Um, one of the one of my favorite quotes in terms of habits is that we don't rise to the level of our <laughs> goals. We fall to the level of our systems. Mm-hmm. And so creating habits and triggers and things in our life that will facilitate healthy communication, that's like 90% I I, I contend of the communication battle is just having the boundaries and the systems in place so that you actually communicate in a healthy way. And then being emotionally mature enough to, to, to turn your gaze inward and think as a, as a man, especially, and think about what I'm actually trying to communicate here, Mm. what I'm actually feeling, what I'm actually dealing with so mm-hmm. that I can't, so I'm not just reacting all the time to myself and to my wife, but instead I'm responding to yeah. those things. So that, that's the hard thing is that because when we talk about communication and podcast like this, it's very tempting just to say, Hey, here's five really quick things to talk about and to, to, to have better habits. And mm-hmm. but we have to understand it comes from a heart change. Um, so here's our discussion. We are going to give you five things. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're going to be very basic, but we're asking, I'm asking you to engage in this topic maybe a little bit more than you would uh, otherwise, because we've given you the whole preamble. <laughs> so, um, here's well, it's rooted in, in God's word. I feel like that should be enough. If you value mm-hmm. God's word, then you're going to value what it has to say and you're going to value mm-hmm. how it teaches you to communicate and how to love your spouse better through how you communicate to them. All right. So number one key toward establishing rock solid communication, which by the way, when we asked couples, what do you face the most issues with in your marriage? What do you struggle with the most? What do you struggle with the most? Thank you. It was communication. Yeah. It wasn't money. It wasn't schedules. It wasn't sex. It was communication. We cannot get on the same page. I think sex was a hard second though, wasn't it? Sure. (laughs) Um, We cannot get on the same page. And so here, these, these are five ways that you can get on the same page. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they are, take, take them in order or not. So number one is talk. Okay. Like I said, super obvious, super insightful here. Uh, but here's the thing. Actively engage your minds in the discussion and learn to articulate your own thoughts in a loving way. Hmm, that is a hard thing. That is a hard, hard thing. Because you have thoughts and you think you're articulating them well. And yet still, you don't hear what I say to you. <laughs> We'll get, we'll get into the hearing after this, <laughs> but yeah, so it's taking the time to actually, like I said, turn your gaze inward. We're not talking about navel gazing. We're talking about being able to pick apart. I know I'm like in my own know heart, yourself. like I feel like yeah. it's a bit of a rat's nest until I get in there and actually start pulling at the threads, getting to the bottom of what I'm actually feeling. And then, then honestly articulating that to you, to my wife. So, um, Here's a verse from Proverbs 12, 12, 18 says, there is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. What are you laughing at? Oh, I just sneezed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a covert sneeze. Trying to not mess up the, the video roll I, here. I cannot do the covert sneeze. <laughs> I have to grab a pillow and Ugh. shove my face in the pillow. Okay. So uh, men struggle with talking in in unique ways in that I think it's easy for guys to shut off and be passive when it's hard to express something. Sure. Um, they don't always know how to articulate what they're dealing with. I just right. mentioned that. Um, and I think men can also uh, with f- familiarity with being overly familiar can get sharp yeah. and terse and cutting and dismissive right. with how they speak to their wives. No, well, women are the same, right? We know how to be, we know how to cut you, cut you down and oh, cut you word. sharp, right? Uh, with when we're familiar, you know, and how, again, how do women struggle when it's, uh, 
differently or maybe in the same way, but I think, yeah, you know, as a woman, if you, when we feel it, we got to tell them, right? Like it's just timing is not everything mm. for, for women and it should be right. Timing, uh, if you're just kind of being that dripping faucet, then you're just going to be nagging, you know, mm. you're not actually going to achieve. Ironically, you're not going to achieve what you're hoping to achieve in, in yeah. telling them. Telling One of him. the things that we've had to work through is you actually making requests <laughs> overtly because you. It sounds you, silly, but I feel like when I'm asking him, I'm nagging him. But when I'm not asking him directly, he's like, I can't read your mind, woman. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? How can I yeah, help you in this, this morning, moment? Right? This morning you go, the dogs are out of food. <laughs> I'm teaching my three-year-old this and my six-year-old and here I am. And I'm like, that's, that's a fact. <laughs> you said a true thing. And she goes, and I don't think the food's going to come today. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Ryan. I want you to I, offer. I, 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 Selena, do, I want do you, you to need offer. me to go to the store? I don't think my three-year-old wants me to offer. My three-year-old's just it, expressing what's happening. I come happening. to you and I say, Selena, do you need me to go to the store to get dog food? She's like, well, if you're going to go to the store, that would be great if you got dog food. I'm like, I'm not going to the store. <laughs> If you don't tell me to go to the store, <laughs> I'm like, ask me to go to the store and I will go. Thank you for instructing me in this. I'm still like, oh, that's what you're doing. <laughs> anyway, you got to talk. You got to be able to get out what you're actually, what you're actually looking to get out. Many times we think we're getting it out, but we, we're failing at it. So yeah. um, we can help each other in this. And one of the ways we help each other is number two is we oh. listen. Okay. So we, we need to give each other the time and the promptings. To be able to speak in a way that is efficacious, it gets it out and into the the conversational space in our marriage. Hmm. So as your husband, now I'm not always just like spurring you along to, you know, I do read into what you're saying and I try to, you know, but I also do need to decipher know? sometimes too, because I don't actually know. I need to actually decipher and learn how to listen. Um, and so we don't often listen <laughs> like we, as, as well as we think we well, do. Well, because I think some of us are so loud in our own heads of how are we going to respond to this? Like he just said this, well, I'm going to come back and say this. And he said this, how dare he even think? And he said that <laughs> like in right. your own head, you're just, it's, it's really hard. I think to hear truly what your spouse is saying when it's either about you or about your marriage. Cause <laughs> it's just, at least this is me. It's just yeah. the emotions. Just all you see is white. You're, you're like, I don't yeah. know. Uh, so much is happening. Which, by the way, so much is happening. And speaking of listening, we have a baby here. Yes. We have seven chicks in the closet. Yes. Not far from here <laughs> that I can hear chirping and pecking away. <laughs> and our dog is barking outside. <laughs> and so there's a lot of listening going on. Oh. I'm trying to stay focused. Um, it's okay. Another, another aspect of listening, um, and we'll pick up pace here a little bit, is we need to listen with charity. Yeah. So, and we need to assume the best and not the interpretation that just reinforces what we feel slash already think. Well, and somebody's got to start, start that pattern, right? Yes. Because Someone's it's so easy for us to just assume the worst mm -hmm. and not think that they're actually, you yeah. know, we're just going to assume the worst. It's easier. It's faster. So we're speaking and articulating, honestly, taking the time to articulate what's in. And then as, as a listener, we need to listen uh, with charity. Speak with clarity, listen with charity. Mm. And number three is to seek understanding. Okay, this this goes to the first point, um, but we need to actually try to understand what they're saying. And sometimes we need to ask clarifying questions. Yes. We also need to understand uh, their, their perspective, yeah. right? So oftentimes, so Selena, okay, so Selena was saying, I'm going to get personal here. You're, you're saying you don't want to go for a walk around our neighborhood because you don't feel safe. Yes. Because sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't feel safe, feel safe sometimes. Yeah. I think it's a very safe neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife is not just saying, or you, I forget what you said, but it, you were trying to communicate to me that you want me to help you feel safe. You want me to give you the, the assurance and perhaps the tools that you need to. Right. To feel, feel safe. safe. To be, and, and in fact, my argument was that you are in fact safe, whether you feel it or not. <laughs> Your argument I was, felt I don't care if I'm safe. Right. I don't feel safe. I yeah. feel vulnerable. Um, and so I needed to read that situation and say, okay, I don't need to just lay the facts on her. I need to actually help my wife feel safe and understand your yeah. perspective. Because facts I've never help. been a woman. <laughs> and you never will be. Let's just put <laughs> I that I never there, will be a okay? woman. And I, and I won't know what it's like to not be a six foot tall man. Able that, man. Able man who doesn't have. Who can defend himself. And generally people don't mess with me. Right. Or approach me or anything because, I don't know, I look mean maybe. I don't know. 
<laughs> it was very nice to me. Uh, the point is, is I, I need to, we need to understand one another. Um, so confirming meaning, meaning, excuse me. Uh, I hear you saying this. What I think you mean is, is this and this, is that yeah, true? Is that true? Or I hear you saying this, is this what you're, you know, is this what you're actually saying? And just seeking that understanding, how disarming is that? Yes. You feel seen, you feel heard. You're ready to try to articulate it again rather than yes. just shut down and say, and I don't care. even if your wife is complete or your spouse has completely whiffed it, like, I hear you saying this, but what I think you're saying is this. Nope, that's not it at all. <laughs> Be gracious, have charity. Be kind how you respond to their whiffing it. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just laughs> yes, whiff. So uh, Proverbs 18, two, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Okay, so take pleasure in understanding. Mm. Learn to want to understand what's going on in the heart and mind of your spouse, mm. as opposed to just winning the conversation or getting out the next thing you want to say. Okay, this next one is maybe less intuitive on the communication side of things, but it should be, and it's act. Okay, so number one, speak. Number two, listen. <laughs> number three, seek understanding. Number four, act. So all the conversations in the world, all of the skills we have in the world, they mean nothing if our conversations precipitate no change. You know that if we talk about, you know, I, 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 if you said to me, Ryan, I, I, I appreciate all you do. I would really appreciate additional help with the garbage because I feel like when the garbage gets full, I feel like you, I feel like you care for me when you take it out and when you don't take it out, I feel like you hate me. <laughs> Basically. That would be sloppy speech because mm -hmm. you know, I don't hate yes. you, but you feel maybe uncared for or whatever or whatever. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Seek really to understand. This is seek <laughs> understanding. <laughs> uh, so, but if, if I said, you know what, Selena, I love you and I want to serve you and I'm going to start taking the garbage out. Uh, and then I just, every time. but then I never do it. Yeah. Right. The surest proof that you can listen is that you act on what you hear. So if, or if I, you know, and frankly, if you say you're going to do something, you don't do it, then you're a liar and lying is a sin and <laughs> generally not something men should do. First um, John three eighteen, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Indeed and in truth. Mm. Good. All right. Number five is rest. Okay. What do I mean by that? Uh, part of resting is trusting and leaving space for the communication to, I'll say ferment. And I think fermentation is a, is a great process. So <laughs> fermentation is a good thing. Let it ferment, let it mature, let the leaven work its way through the conversational dough. <laughs> Rest and trust that at, if you've spoken true things, you've sought to listen with charity, you've sought understanding, you've been acting mm. in good faith. And if you're not seeing the change happen, rest and trust. Mm -hmm. that and be this, patient. This, when we align ourselves with the word of God, namely what the word of God says about communication, which the books that we've written it's all based on God's word and the communication principles we have in God's word. When we align ourselves with that, we can expect that to bear fruit in our lives, yeah. but it doesn't always bear fruit on our terms and on our timelines. Yeah. And so we have to rest and trust. Well, and what's the difference quickly about resting versus just relinquishing and throwing your hands up? Resting is, mm. is acting in a way of trust, right? Relinquishing is, is giving up. So I think it's, it's not just, well, I'm mm. just going to rest and who cares what happens. It's like, no, I'm going to rest in the knowledge that I have tried and done what I feel like the Lord has led me and instructed me in his word. I'm going to rest knowing that maybe seeds are planted, even though I can't see the growth right now, that there will be change. I need to give some things some time. Mm. Uh, let it, let it marinate. Yeah. I like marinating. Yes. You like fermenting. I'll ferment, you'll marinate. <laughs> we'll come together in a delicious <laughs> stew. <laughs> a boozy stew. <laughs> Goodness. All right. Philippians 3.12 says this, and I think it's really apt right here. Not that I have already obtained it, it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. So there's this mm. pressing on and anticipation in faith. And that's what you were saying about mm -hmm. rest mm -hmm. and trust. And it's not just a throwing up your hands. Right. But it's a it's an eager pressing in mm -hmm. with a with a uh, a, a God centered contentment yeah. around that work. Amen. So and of course the big kind of underlying piece to this is to pray through it all. Mm -hmm. As you're working through communication issues, pray yeah. pray on your own in your time with God. Pray throughout the day. Let prayer be the attitude of your heart. Mm -hmm. But also 
if you can, and you, a lot of couples struggle with this and, and I, I think it's a tragedy. A couple struggle with praying together. Mm-hmm. Grab your wife. If you're a wife, grab your husband. <laughs> grab, grab, okay. Grab him by the neck. Lay one on him and say, let's pray, sweetheart. <laughs> um, we pray together. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to say, God, help us communicate better. And, mm-hmm. and to admit to one another, we don't communicate well. Yeah. We're actually pretty bad at this. But guess what? I'm not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Let's spend some time on this. Let's apply ourselves and let's pray that the Lord allows us to become fruitful communicators. Sunny is about ready for a nap. Speaking of prayer, uh, we're going to pray in a second. But first, I want to uh, invite you into a relationship with Christ. If you don't know who he is, um, you need to know Jesus. You need to know that he died for you. He loves you. He's the son of God. He's not just a good teacher. He is the son of God incarnate and he died, but he didn't stay dead. He resurrected to new life and he wants to bring you along with him in that new life. We're trusting that if he's calling you, that this might be a way that he is rearticulating that call in your life. And so if you want to know what it means to follow Christ, my first encouragement is this. Find a friend you know as a Christian, if you have one, and ask them to pray with you. Ask them to read the Bible with you. If they're if they are a Christian worth their salt, they will. If you don't have one of those, find a good Bible preaching church. Sometimes that's hard to find. So we have a website for you that kind of lays out some of these steps, some of the core ideas behind what it means to be a Christian. And it gives you a step down that path toward finding a church. And that website is this, thenewsisgood.com. Check that out. We would love to call you brother or sister in Christ when we meet one day in glory. Lord willing, let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift it is to communicate as husband and wife. I pray for this, the husbands and wives listening to this or watching this, that they would um, strive for godly communication as a means to an end of being sanctified, as a means to an end of, of giving and experiencing the love that you've, you've set aside for the covenant of marriage. Lord, I pray that you would help husbands be kind and patient in their communication. I pray that the wives would also be kind and patient in their communication and that they would flourish in this area so that every other area of their marriage might improve all for their good and for your glory. Ultimately in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, as a reminder, we have our new communication book set. This is just scratching the surface, you guys. Mm. 18 chapters of depth. We labored over these books for the better part of a year, I want to say. Yeah. And we're finally ready to release them into the wild. If you want to pre-order those, you'll get a screaming deal. There's probably going to be some benefits with it. I don't know what those are going to be yet. Maybe we'll do some sort of communication course or something that you'll have access to with it. But more than anything, you'll get both books. Excuse me. You'll get both books and you'll get them for uh, an awesome price. Go to fiercemarriage.com slash speak. And that will be your ticket to a better communication life. (laughs) That was cheesy. (laughs) Anyway, thanks for joining us uh, this episode of Fierce Marriages. In the can. We'll see you again in seven days. Until next time. Stay fierce.